Hi, I'm Tati Fittipaldi. I'm a change management strategist and a certified professional coach. In this channel, we make videos to help global leaders, multicultural professionals and expatriates improve their productivity, their effectiveness and overall leadership in business and in life. If that sounds for you, click that subscribe button now. In today's workshop, we will discuss about the five stages in the expatriation process, how it relates to regular transition processes, what are some of the hinder and success factors, what's the company role in all this, and what can, for example, both companies and individuals gain from the expatriation opportunities. So this workshop is packed with a bunch of information if you are uh, considering to understand more about uh, what to expect from an expatriation process. So let's talk now about the five phases of the expatriation adaptation process. So the first step is the awareness phase. So in this phase, the individual uh, approaches a different place and a culture uh, unaware of what they know and what they don't know. Things can either be seen as novelty or as obnoxious and unpleasant. And this is the time usually for the first contacts where people learn and gain awareness of, of how the things are. And it's a phase whereby people are experimenting for the first time many things and they will make judgments of how they will accept or incorporate it. So in other words, at this moment, people are gaining awareness about what needs to be changed in their lives and which things um, they want to keep from their uh, original life, let's put it this way. So during the expatriation process, um, the awareness phase is significantly linked with the denial stage of the transition process, where, you know, usually things are experienced for the first time, viewed as different from their original country, and then they are denied value because of that. So that, you know, makes sense because considering that in, in psychological terms, uh, we like things and people more when they're familiar to us, when they're similar to us. So it makes sense that when you are coming in contact with new things, you sort of don't like them uh, in, in, at first. The second thing is the research phase. The research phase is noted by being, you know, a period where people try to understand the differences and what are the possible solutions to accommodate their, their discomfort to a certain change. So it's basically a stage where, um, you know, people, they, they start researching what to adapt, how to adapt, which resources they will need, uh, how much they will cost and, and so on. So in the expatriation, in the transition process, this phase is uh, very connected with the resistance phase in the, in the early stages and then an exploration phase uh, in later moments. And that's because, you know, during the research, there is still a lot of opposition to, to what they're unfamiliar with. So the more expatriates are exposed on how things are done and how things are and why they are so, the more they end up becoming more familiar with it and then the more they become more uh, accepting. So this is uh, the re one of the reasons why uh, getting involved with locals and engaging in locals events becomes so crucial for adjustment because it, it, it uh, exposes you and, and makes you become more familiar with things. So after this initial resistance is overcome, then people start exploring and experimenting and go through trial and error to see what works for them. The more they become familiar with things, the more courageous they become with experimenting uh, with uh, different things. Then the third step is the resource phase. 
the resource phase uh, follows the resource uh, the the research phase by being a you know a phase where you're trying to mobilize the resources that you need for making the changes and and adapting to your new situation so if you've done your job well in the research phase uh, then this phase becomes more a matter of execution and then individuals you know um, experience shorter periods of time here uh, when when the research and the planning um, the initial planning was done well in the transition process um, this adaptation stage relates to the exploration process you find new resources and solutions you put them to the test you evaluate how well they are working for you if not you go back to the to the drawing board and you research more and you try to mobilize new resources and so on so the the resource phase is that phase basically that you were uh, actually you know putting some action um, into what whatever you researched in the previous uh, phase then comes the planning phase so and it makes sense after you know you resource you researched you you mobilized some resource now you know you you're getting the hang out of it so you are now much more capable of planning and starting to plan your life for real so once you mobilize the resources and the solutions that best work for you and your family the next Phase is basically, you know, um, planning. So um, individuals or family plan the budget, uh, plan what they that what they are going to need for the next few years, and they start making conscious choices that are aligned with the changes that they are willing to make. So it's a time when they identify how much they should save for their kids' college, for example or how much they should put toward an investment or retirement plan and so on. So it's when they really start to uh, looking into the future. In the transition process, this stage is um, aligned with the moment where families and individuals, they start to settle in finally. And they feel more adapted to their new uh, reality. They feel um, they expanded their comfort zone, that they understand the new reality more, and they're more confident to make plans. Next is the implementing phase. This is the final stage, and it's where, you know, individuals and families feel comfortable enough to implement their plans. Because one thing, one thing is making plans, the other thing is really rolling up the sleeves and 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 make that plan happen so you might be thinking to save some money for retirement but actually saving the money for retirement is another thing so in this phase you are ready you're ready to implement your plans so what happens is that sometimes um you know they are in the four uh in, in the stage four the planning phase and something really big happens in people's life and they end up regressing uh, in their transition process to early stages where sometimes they have to go back to the drawing board and research and mobilize resources and on plan again. So for example, it could be a sudden sickness of a family member, an injury, a loss, or any other factor that uh, throws the expatriate out of balance. So I just wanted to point out that this process, although I'm putting here in a linear axis here, it's not so linear. It could go back and forth depending on um, how you are adapting and what's happening and what's uh, the circumstances in your life. However, if nothing happens to hinder the families and the individuals, this means they are ready uh, in the stage of implementation and they make conscious efforts to settle in 
and feel more adjusted to their new reality. So this is very connected with the set. It's fully connected with the settle in uh, process. So once again, you go through a denial process and then there's resistance. There's a lot of opposition, especially things you're not very familiar or comfortable yet. And then when you start, you know, becoming more familiar and comfortable, you start exploring, you, you start testing out. And then once, you know, you got the hang of it, you understand, you understand why, uh, why do's and don'ts, uh, you start to make plans, you start to implement plans, and then uh, you uh, become, you know, uh, ready to really say you are settled in. Stay tuned for more reviews, interviews, training, tips, and information in this channel. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and I hope to see you soon. I wish you well, and thank you so much for watching.